Back in 1497, John Cabot said to his dad, I think I'll go and discover a miracle. His times is looking bad. Of course, I'll have to borrow a couple of quid and some clothes in your old top hat. Because the hat I got is 10 years old and been slept in by the cat. His dad looked up from his paper with his glasses on the end of his nose. Whatever do you think you look like, he said, dressed up in my old clothes. They ain't never gonna fit you, my old son, cause you're much too bloomin' well fed. Then he looked at his hat, and he looked at John's head. Cool, blime old blinkin' Riley, he said. He's never get a girt big head like thine in a tiny little lat like this. The odds is all against thee. I should knock ye off the list. If these were to try and force ye on, the sides would all buckle and twist. Now, nah, he's never get a girt big head like thine in a tiny little lat like this. He's never get a girt big head like thine in a tiny little lat like this. Not unless he's making bigger by ramming in over the fist. Even then he'll want reinforcing. No, the spare give you a miss. Cause he's never get a girt big head like thine in a tiny little lad like this. John was quite upset by now. But there's one thing he'd have dread. Having girt big drops of rain fall down right on top of his head. And it do persistently rain in a miracle. So Chris Columbus said, I got a good idea, said John's old dad. Why doesn't discover Porter's head instead? Because he's never get a girt big head like thine in a tiny little hat like this. He ain't seriously trying to tell I that he's really hoped to, best. I shouldn't go and discover a miracle. They don't know what they missed. Cause he's never get a girl big head like thine in a tiny little lad like this. No, he's never get a girl big head like thine in a tiny little lad like this. <laughs>